Yeah, I want, I'm going to confess we are in church. Those tissues are for me, just in case I asked Rick to bring them up. And so hopefully I won't need them because we've been sharing, shedding a lot of tears this week, and uh, I'm honored to be here. Before I forget, I, I saw Bruce Mills, uh, who was the former chief of the Public Safety Emergency Management uh, Agency before we consolidated. Bruce, I saw you, but I don't see you now. Where are you? I want to just say thanks for, for hiring Jaime, because you gave us a prince and you gave us a treasure, and I, and I, and I want to just commend you and thank you for getting that one right and bringing them to us. And thank you, San Angelo, for giving them to us, because he has been a prince. You know, Jaime Padron, who, who, who was he? You know, he's, uh, he's a father, a son, a brother, an uncle, a police officer, a friend, a Marine, a servant. But above all else, he was a hero. And you know, let's face it, when we go to these things, everybody's a hero. And I thank God that as I stand before you today, knowing Jaime, not just as an employee number, not just as a name, but knowing him as a human being because he stood out. In a police department with 2,300 officers, when I got the call at 2 something in the morning, not long after going to sleep, because it has been a trying week for us in organization. And, and it started on April 5th, 2010, or 2012, at about 1840, with Officer Eric Copeland, who was here. Eric, uh, where are you? Eric, where are you? Eric Copeland. You're here somewhere. Well, Eric Copeland, at about 1840 hours, was involved in a critical incident where he was in a fight for his life. He was in a fight where someone was trying to take his life. And as I stand here, mourning one life, but more mamá celebrando la vida de su hijo, celebrating that life, I'm thankful that this sanctuary is not a foreign place for Jaime Padron and his family. Because your faith, y su, el dolor que usted siente como mamá, yo sé que siendo gran madre, personas de fe me ha dado a mí mucho apoyo. And so, our officers have been talking about some of the things going on and other grieving mothers and the officers from Austin know what I'm talking about. We're all grieving and everyone needs a moment to grieve and always keep that in mind regardless of who, who that son is. But Eric, I thank God. I know how close you came and I thank God you're here and I stand with you and your family. And then by the time we got home that night, I had just gone to sleep and the call, that, that phone call rings. And when you're in this business, folks, when you get the call in the middle of the night, it's not Avon calling. It is always bad news. And I was told, Chief, we've had an officer shot. And my first question is always, what's his status? And the response from our watch commander was, he's in serious condition. And I asked, where is he? And he said, who is he and where is he? told me he was en route to BRAC, so my next thought is calling Mike McDonald, our deputy city manager, Mark Ott, our city manager, uh, Sergeant Vincent, our APA president, and starting to respond, and within two minutes, didn't shower, so if I smelled, I apologize. And by the way, you can laugh here, we're here to celebrate. Our mayor tried to, actually was funny, I think I was the only a laugh mayor, so I acknowledge that Marine comment, it was outstanding. Now, as I was responding to the scene, I got the call that he didn't make it, that he had been pronounced, and so we responded, and uh, we got there. Now, I was thinking about Jaime, because Jaime stood out. And when I arrived on that scene, and shortly thereafter, Mark Ott arrived, and, oh, and I forgot I called Rick Chaplain Randall, because, the, well, let's face it, we know the God Squad's important for us, and they immediately started uh, responding. And I saw him lying there, and I saw his fellow officers. I saw a lot of pain. But with that pain, on Good Friday, as soon as I found out that Jaime and his family were people of faith, the healing immediately began. When Johnny's here somewhere, one of our officers from his shift, we held hands and we prayed. 
And then Chaplain and I, Rick Randall and I prayed over his body. My mom no murió solo, murió en el servicio de esta comunidad y murió con personas que lo aman a su hijo. Yo amo a su hijo porque es parte de mi familia. And then the picture started coming to me about what happened. That because of what happened that night, and I don't want to embarrass these guys because they're very humble. We found out that our suspect went into that store. I'm fully convinced that he went in there knowing what he was going to do based on everything I know to this date. And two gentlemen that worked for Walmart that knew Jaime, that worked with Jaime, he wasn't just a uniform to them, he was a face. Without hesitation, after he was struck down by this person, these two gentlemen from Walmart that were the store managers at night immediately, immediately took action. They immediately jumped on that suspect. For their thanks, they got a shot fired at them that whizzed right past them. They jumped on that radio. They started calling for help. They started telling Jaime, don't, don't fall asleep, wake up, stay here. And I'm gonna tell you guys that because of you, there is no anger in the hearts of the Austin Police Department. There is pain, there is mourning, but there is hope in knowing that out of this tragedy, we have the silver lining of the two men that are sitting up front that demonstrated what our people know, that despite the community of 10 that will say the same thing anytime a police officer defends themselves, it's never the suspect's fault. It's the police officer's fault. Well, these gentlemen demonstrated to the men and women of the Austin Police Department that we serve a community much greater than the 10 critics. We serve a community of hundreds of thousands, and they jumped in there that night. They put their lives at risk for Jaime, for their coworkers, for their responding officers, and I want to recognize them. Stand up, you two guys. Ladies and gentlemen, come up here so they can see you. Lincoln Lemire and Archie Jordy. is who we come to work for every day. People like these. So again, thank you, my friends. I told you before, I'm gonna tell you again, we're gonna honor you in the next week. So be ready because this is just starting for you. So again, thank you and God bless you. And thanks for being the angels at his side and being from his, on his side the entire time. And one more thing about Walmart that I'm gonna throw out since they're up here. This morning while I was over here, I've received word that Walmart had delivered a check in the sum of $50,000 to go into trust for Allie and, uh, and, and Olivia. And thank you for that, Walmart. <laughs>